Welcome to the first ever 3D. JJ, I said 3D. Not lens, lens. Calm down with the lens flares. Go. Stop. Oh my God. You're you're fired. You're fired. I can't believe I spent a million dollars on you. All right. So so that didn't work out the way I planned it to. But anyway, welcome to Orcs and Goblins versus Vitronian. This is be against Once Bitten. You've probably already seen his battle report, but this is completely different. Um, first off, the scenario here. Um, it's gonna be. Corcane. <laughs> um, we're going to have is five Corcane tokens in the center of the board. Each one is going to be worth 25 victory points if you control at the end of the game, and one battle point. Um, but at the start of each controlling player turn, you roll a d6. On a roll of five, your unit that has the Corcane token takes d3 wounds and no armor saves. So this is something he's not going to do with his knights. I, I just want to test it out. It's not really something going to affect my horde units, but it's still something I want to test out. All right, so I got my army here. It's the same as last time. Uh, basically, I, I really want to try to keep my Savage Horde from getting like triple charge from three different lances. I'm I'm really hoping my trolls can get some good matchups, and I think that's something really he's really worried about with the with the vomits. You know, I don't have 18 trolls, so I've only got eight, but eight's still pretty tough. Here's one Spitz army. Um, he has no peasants. I know that he's doing his Bretonian campaign, so for the virtues he's trying to get, he can't take any peasants, so that means no trebuchets. Um, I didn't, I don't really exactly remember what um, virtues he's trying to get. I know he was trying to get the one for charging um, cavalry because I remember hearing him say that before the game. Uh, but I, I don't know what the other ones were, and I know he got them, but I don't know how he got them. I think he got one for killing my big monster, but otherwise I can't remember what he was, he was trying to get. Here we have some picks that set up. Um, if you see the center of the table, these are the Corcane tokens. And if you want to stay why it's called Corcane, is this is the lethal weapon themed tournament for Grow Quest. The last Grow Quest was also lethal weapon themed, and this one, uh, you know, is Bomb Busey's returning. His is great return because you know Busey dies in the last Grow Quest, and I think he's coming back as a vampire this time. Unfortunately, it's not going to be. You don't get to actually fight him this time like you did last time. I remember last time I fought him when I was playing, I think, Tom, and my Night Goblins were fighting Gary Busey. He was unbreakable, <laughs> and that let like, his almost entire Ogre army charge my Night Goblin horde, and I lost 66 Night Goblins in one turn of combat. That's the way it went. Here we have Vanguards, and basically my plan was for one of these fast cavs to take one of these tokens just to play test it and see, you know, what exactly would happen. I knew basically what the chances would be. But you know, I wanted to test it out. And of course to start the game, animosity makes my entire line come to a ground and halt. My savages fail, the warfighters fail, and then the goblins over here, they fail and roll a one again. And the warfighter is about a half inch closer than the big ones, so the warfighters and the goblins fight each other. I don't kill any warfighters, but I kill one goblin. And then so at the end of this, all three of these are gonna be squabbling. So for the rest of the turn, I move up just a little bit. That's basically the most I can move my spine beast there without being too close to any of my units. Um, otherwise, my little fast cab on the left here picks up a token and moves around the side of the the Pegasus Knights just to hold that token and see how long they could live. Um, we go into magic. I put all my dice into Foot of Gork and dispels it. And then my shooting, I, I don't even think I accomplish anything really. I think I kill one or two knights between two Doom Divers and three Spare Chuckers. So that's pretty much my turn. So going into Brett turn one, he charged my Wolf Riders that had failed animosity. And I decided to hold, I, if I had not failed animosity, I was going to put them right in front of those knight units. And at that point, I probably would have fled because I think he would have caught me when I tried to get away. And I think he has to move the entire charge distance if he catches me. So I think he'd have been real close to my trolls in that case and I would have had a really easy charge and maybe even got my spawn beast in there too and you know maybe impossibly had the goblins in the flank. But since he's I didn't do that because I failed him honestly I decided to hold here because I know even if he doesn't overrun, run he's in charge just since of my trolls. Um, other than that he just moves those other units up a bit. Um, I think his peg knights start coming down towards my spirit chakra so when we go into magic, I don't really think he gets off much. Uh, he has no real shooting, so we go into combat and he just destroys mobile fathers, but he does not overrun. So we have Orc and Goblin turn two. Uh, this time my savages failed on Mossy again, but they're forced to charge this time. 
and they just failed to charge and they rolled really badly. I think they only moved like one or two inches forward. So my savages like two turns in a row, barely doing anything. Um, see, I don't think anything else fails animosity um, when we go into charges. I charge my trolls that has BSB's units, which flees. I wonder if I should have charged my monster in first, and maybe he would have held, and then I could have just let that monster try to snipe his um, BSB. But otherwise, I moved my troll up. That's the, the full 12 inches I could get that troll up. It wasn't not quite enough to be able to block his knights, but that's the best I really could move it up. Um, also, at the start of this turn, when I roll for my Corcane token, I roll a 5, then I roll, I do 2 wounds to my uh, goblins. They fail their panic test and they run right off the board. So, the moral of the story is don't pick up Corcane tokens with Fast Cav. So, when we go into magic, um, I get Forty Gork off Irresistible Force. I get five stomps out of this. So the the first four stomps I'm putting on his um, Grail Knights. The first one scatters, but I still kill one or two. Then I have two direct hits. And no, I have one direct hit, and that kills about three. And then at this point, he only has three guys left. So the next two, they scatter completely off. And I do do nothing to it. So I'm like, well, this is scattering now because this unit's so small. So I put the fifth one on his um, knight's way on the far left here. And of course, I get a direct hit this time, but I only kill like two knights or maybe three. So I, I should have just kept that with the direct hit. I probably would have killed his prophetess if I if I'd kept with that last hit stomp there on his um, unit. So then um, the spell goes away. Then uh, going into shooting. So in shooting, um, my Doom Divers try to pick on that Grail Knight unit. I get down to one Grail Knight left, and I think I put a wound on the Prophetess as well. Uh, I know it miscasts later and does another wound to itself, so it has like one wound left for most of the game. So now I also have a Spirit Truck that shoots his General's unit, and he manages to kill three of those, I think they're Questing Knights. That's basically it for my shooting. Um, there's no real combat, so that'll be the end of my turn. Going into Brett's turn too, he tries a triple charge in my trolls, but his general unit fails. So that all means that also the Knights of the Realm beside them fail because they can't make it through that gap. So only the one unit, I think it was the Errantry Knights, make it into the trolls. He rallies his BSB's unit, and then he moves his Prophetess out of the remaining Grill Knight and moves that Grill Knight on the other side of the BSB's unit by itself to try to you know keep me from getting the points for that. His um, Pegasus Knights also failed to charge on my Spirit Chaka. So when we're going into um, magic, I think this is when he he miscasts. I think he's given um, Wild Form onto the Knights fighting my trolls, and he just does a wound to himself. Um, when we go into combat, he kills. He does exactly the three wounds to my trolls. I think I do three wounds back, and I think he wins combat, but I hold. So going into Orc and Goblin turn 3, I try to charge my Savages at his General's unit. They fail their charge. So now I'm, now I'm you know, where I'm open to his Pegasus Knights coming to the flank. If I'd made my charge, I wouldn't have had to worry about that. I also charge my um, Spine Beast into the flank of the Knights that the Trolls are fighting. And I charge my Goblins into those Paladin little Knight unit that's in the woods. And I just do that to try to... I'm trying to hold off those knights from coming in here and threatening my flanks and stuff as long as possible. So I'm kind of like sacri I'm sacrificing those goblins to try to protect my bunker for as long as possible. So um, we go into magic. I don't get photogoric off to work this time. Um, in shooting, I have a spear chucker here that's in the woods. It kills that last grail knight. So that spear chucker is paid for itself. Otherwise, uh, I don't think I really do anything. I'm trying to shoot at the Prophetess with my Doom Divers and they're scattering off and not doing anything. So we go into combat. I, I'm able to get that um, Unit Knights down to just three guys left. I, I really, th really think I should have that. He He's down to like Leadership 3 and he makes it. He rolls a 3. So I, if I had broke them, I... I think my spine beast would have been real close to his his beast unit, or at least been blocking them. I was probably going to try to restrain with my trolls, 
but I would have been holding off that night unit. So I think that could have changed uh, quite a bit there. Um, and I think that's the end of the combats. Oh, you know, the goblins, the goblins, of course, they get destroyed by the knights. And I'm not steadfast, and I break, and I get run down. So I think instead of charging my goblins, I probably should have just moved them up and just tried to block those knights instead. So we're in Brett turn three, and he charges his knights around with his BSB and his general's unit at my spine beast that's fighting, I think, the rest of the anti knights. Um, he charges other knights of the realms at my single troll. His Pegasus Knight sent a flank of my savages, which have been stuck almost in place for three turns. And then he charges his little knights with his paladin into the flank of my um, bunker unit. And if you look at this picture, you'll see how depleted my bunker was. This was partly because of that miscast with my photogork earlier. I killed some like seven savages from that. Um, so I had already lost a bit of savages from that, and then he kills more here in this fight. So um, going into magic, I think he gets wild form again off on his um, BSB's unit, and I think he gets savage beast off on his general, which is gonna I could not stop that. Um, so we go into combat here. I'm striking first with my um, beast here, even after his his you know his little spike attack really do nothing. I think I kill one quest a night. So then I just put all my attacks at his quest tonight, trying to whittle them down, just trying to get combat res. And I kill a good number of them, but it doesn't matter. His general kills my um, spine beast right afterwards, because I was down to like three wounds. So then my trolls, they vomit on the three knights that they were fighting. They kill them all. And so now we have a situation where it's two separate combats, so basically everybody's just sitting there looking at each other. Um, the bad thing is going to be here is that with my savages... I don't move my general over to fight because I want him. To want, I don't want to do too much damage to him. I want it to be where he holds, and I don't. I'm not forced to pursue him. So I don't move over and make way. And also, I'm hoping if he sticks, you know, my general will be there to give leadership to my trolls, so that they can pass their stupidity tests. But what happens is my big boss is sitting on the corner, so. He allocates most of his attacks into my big boss because he doesn't want to do that much damage to me. He wants to lose and run. So he only does one wound to my big boss, and my big boss and the three savages that are there can fight. They do like four wounds. So I'm able to win that combat. He's down to like a five, I think he needs. And he fails and he runs, and I'm forced to pursue. So basically, I think if my big boss wasn't there on the corner, I think that he wouldn't have lost by that much. I think he would have held, and I wouldn't have been forced to pursue him. So basically, I should have. Well, I mean, I've, I've charged, so I couldn't move him at, at that point anyway. But I don't think I had any point where I could have moved that big boss off the corner to not have it where he could have pulled his attack into my big boss. So anyway, this one he destroys my troll, or just lets his knights of the realm come to the flank of my savage um, biggins there. So then the fight with the um, bunker, I issue a challenge with my BSB. I think we do one wound to each other. I hold because I'm steadfast and I pass my reform test, so I'm able to face him. Sword and Goblin turn four. I found my stupidity in my trolls. I really wish I could have passed that. Um, going into into magic. Um, you know, my photogorks facing a spot where I have nothing where I can aim it at because he's facing the paladins, little knights realm unit. I get a fist of gork off on my level three guy. Um, other than that, when we go into shooting, I, I, I try to kill that prophetess and try to whittle down his general's unit, and I don't get much accomplished. I don't do nothing to the prophetess, and I, I might have killed one guy from his general's unit, but nothing more than that. So when we go into the combat, um, I, I, I make way with my general and uh, big boss. Um, he's striking first after my think after my general. So, before my big boss does, so he's able to kill my big boss before he can strike. So I only kill maybe three or four of his guys. I lose by, I think, three. So I need a six. I roll like an eight. So I break, run, and get, get run down. And, and the game is basically over this point, but he wants to play a little more, you know, just 
so people don't think I'm just giving up too early. So um, we keep playing. Um, my shaman does some damage to his knights. Neither my BSB or his paladin could do anything to each other, and they um, challenged each other. Scorn in Brett's turn four, he charges his BSB's knights of the realm at my trolls, and he charges his other knights of the realm at the spirit chakra. Now, when we go into combat, I mean not into combat, when we go into magic, he has wall form still off on his BSB's unit, and he gets irresistible. I think it's something that gives it, gives more toughness. So he's like toughness seven. For his BSB's unit fighting my trolls. So even with my vomits, I'm going to need sixes to wound. And then for his miscast, he rolls a seven. His prophecy is by herself, so it's, just, it's just absolutely nothing to anything. She's completely fine. Even if she was sitting on one wound, I was really hoping it would at least kill her. So um, when we go into combat with the trolls, he kills like one troll. I have like four vomits I can put on his BSB, which has no ward save now. But it's Toughness seven, so I need sixes to wound. So I, you know, put the four vomits on it. I'm hoping if I can roll two sixes, I kill his BSB. I don't even roll any sixes, so I do nothing to him. Um, because I know I'm my general's dead. I'm gonna be, even if I lose by one, I'm gonna be, you know, with a three with a reroll. So I might as well try to snipe his BSB. So my trolls get run down, but he does not pursue enough to get to my bunker and to flank my bunker. He stops just one inch short. So we go into the bunker combat. Um, my BSB is able to kill his paladin finally, um, but then he does wounds back to my shaman, where I'm down to one wound for my great shaman. He does not break. I was really hoping if he, if he breaks, then maybe my BSB's unit and my great shaman could get out of the line of sight of those knights of the realm. But he kill, he holds on. He also kills my spirit chaco. So going into turn five here, I decided I want to play a turn five because if this was a tournament, I even though I'm losing very badly, I still have two Doom Divers. I'm still fighting knights. If it's a twenty nil system, I can still get points. I've killed a lot of his stuff already. I've killed the Pegasus Knights, Grail Knights, um, I've killed a Paladin. I, I've just about finished off the Quest of Knights, and I killed his Errantry Knights. So you know, if I can kill his general or his prophet, so I, I can get a lot of points. If I can get those knights of the realm, that's more points. I can maybe, I would, you know, avoid getting blown out 20 nothing. So, you know, I just want to see what happens. Um, when we go into see a dispel, Fistagork, I think. So, I try to get Fistagork back on my um, guy. Um, I'm able to do that. So, then we go into shooting my Doom Divers. I put both of them on his general. Both of them scatter off. No, I put both of them in his general's unit. I kill all the Questa Knights there, but I only do one wound to his general. So, you know, I do get points there, but I don't kill his general. I don't even get half points for his general. And I don't even think I have any spirit checkers left to shoot his prophetess. So, um, going to combat, he strikes first at my, um, my Great Shaman. He kills the Great Shaman with the last wound left on it. You know, I still have Fist of Gork off. I could probably wipe out those last two knights, but he comes with Great Shimmer first. I don't do any damage to his knights, so he holds again, so that's basically the game. You know, I was I was really hoping I could get those knights. I just wanted to see what happens. So this would be a victory for the Bretts. We don't add it up at the end. I, I may have killed enough stuff to keep it from being 20 nothing, but um, if we were playing in a tournament, I probably would have kept playing out just to see if I could cook by any points, but I'm just conceding here because I know there's nothing I can really do. I can't. He's gonna get both my Doom Divers during his turn, so I'm have nothing left to really kill in his Prophetess or his um his General. So this be a victory for the Bretts, and he gets all three of his virtues. So for Malorian and Sassadium Center, if if one Spitten wins, it's because he destroyed me. <laughs> so so you can write your thank you letters to me. Um. It was a real fun game. Uh, we're going to have a doubles tournament coming up this Saturday. I'm going to be playing, teaming up with Ian. Um, hopefully we'll get some battle reports up for that. We're going to be doing double orcs, so that's going to be really fun, hopefully. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot.